Alright, you guys, how we doing today? Um, today I'm going to do a little demo of how to paint with coffee. And I imagine you could do this with tea as well. Um, to be honest, I am not a coffee drinker. And so like, I actually had to go out and buy um, some instant coffee because for all practical purposes, this might be the worst coffee in the world and taste the worst, but I'm not going to put it in my mouth. And so I don't have to worry about how it tastes, just as a matter, I guess, of how um, brown I can make the water uh, that I'm going to use for painting. But if you are a household that has coffee in it, um, Honestly, you could take that leftover coffee that's at the bottom of the pot that nobody's drinking and just kind of set it aside. Uh, or you could, like, you know, make some coffee. Like, if you run it through a coffee pot, uh, you can actually just do a really small amount of water and maybe cycle it a few times just so that it gets really dark and rich. Um, again, you don't have to worry about, like, drinking it or whatever, but the idea is basically get as much of the water. Um, maybe out of it so that it's really intense. And so actually what I did, I used the instant coffee and I actually filled this um, up with water and I made like some little coffee in there and it was still too watery. So I put it in my microwave and if you put water in the microwave and just run it for a while, it actually just boils it. And so that boiled up the water. This like in two minutes, it boiled off probably two thirds of the water and made it really intense. It also made a huge mess in my microwave with all this coffee splatter. So. Uh, part of the beauty of being an adult, I can make messes like this in my kitchen and I will clean it up and I don't have anybody else yelling at me about it. So if you do make a mess, um, just, I don't know, don't blame it on me. Make sure that you uh, clean up your messes and don't tell your parents that I told you to do this. So anyways, um, I'm going to use this coffee uh, for doing some water coloring. So what I'm going to do today, there's a couple different things that I'm going to show you. Um, but I'm just going to kind of go through uh, just some basic kind of watercoloring techniques, but we're just going to have like one color, which is this brown, and um, we're going to call that kind of like a sepia, okay, like a sepia tone, all right? What I'm going to use for materials, um, I grabbed, this is part of a bill uh, for my, I think it's my, maybe my water bill or something like that, but it's got some white paper on it, so I figured like that'll work pretty good. I also had part of this cardboard box. Um, obviously, this is thicker. And so thicker cardboard is going to work better for like holding the water. It's not going to get as wrinkly as fast. This stuff is pretty thin uh, and that's not going to be awesome. But uh, there's a couple things that we can do to like make that a little bit better. So I'll talk about that as we get going. So basically just get some white paper. Um, the other thing I grabbed is a paper plate. Uh, you could do this with a plastic plate. It would actually probably work better. Uh, the paper plate has kind of a film like on it, uh, which will kind of resist the water. But if I put the coffee, and you can see like the, the coffee stands on here, if I put coffee on here and just let it kind of uh, dry out, um, I can go back in with my brush with a little bit of water on it and work it up and have more, I can have more control over the colors. I can basically take a little bit of water and put it in here, again, like I'll show you all this later, but um, this kind of palette um, gives me a little bit more control than just dipping it right into uh, the container with the coffee in it. All right, so got that set aside. I got my paper. Uh, I've got a brush now. Some of you are probably lucky enough to have like brushes at home. Maybe you have your own brushes. Um, any kind of brush will work if you have like little kits. Like you also might find, um, I don't know, like just random things that have brushes in them, like makeup and stuff like that. You might be able to find little brushes. Um, the other thing that you could do is use like your finger or something like that. Maybe it's a really general painting, but you could actually probably use your finger uh, to do this. So again, tools that are on your house, you guys, the biggest thing is experiment, play around with this, fail, all right, make mistakes. And then when you bring this to your final project, um, you're just going to be in a better place. Okay. So, uh, let's get after this. So the first thing, I'm going to use this white paper just because I want you guys to see a little bit more about how um, this is going to be affected. So if I just take some water, and I got a pretty wet brush right now, and I put it on the paper, and I just kind of scrub it in, all right? Now I had a little bit of coffee on there, but you can see, and maybe you can't see, but like you got a little bit of tone up, but I can see this paper is turning dark. It's starting to allow, like the paper's saturating it. 
And I really, really, really want to avoid that, okay? So something that I always tell kids to do, like check your brush, all right? So like on this like other piece of paper, I'm just like checking my brush. I'm making sure that it's a really minimal amount of water that I'm bringing over here. I just barely want enough water on it that it's gonna transfer the, the stuff on, the paint, the coffee, all right, as it is. So I'm gonna go through this. I'm going to, I also have this over here. And if I grab just a little bit of this, I'm gonna like work up a little bit of this coffee that's already staining on here. All right, check my brush. Okay, make sure I don't have it. And then I'm just gonna spread this on my paper. All right. And going slow with this, you guys, is always a good idea. Just taking our time. Um, and again, get a little bit of this worked up over here, like on my little tray. All right, I'm gonna bring it over, put it on here, and I'm just gonna blend that in. All right, just like that. So you can see it's darker up here. It's getting lighter as it progressively goes on here. The more water I have in it, the better. With watercolor, you always wanna work from dark to light. You wanna like progressively build up those darkers. Like go in, put tone in, like light tone in, and then progressively get darker and darker. So I'm gonna like grab some of this fresh coffee over here. Put that on there. Again, blend that in. I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab a little bit of the coffee, mix it in with a little bit of this dry coffee over here. All right, see how intense that gets, okay? This isn't gonna be like an intense black, right? This is, it's coffee, like it's brown. It's not gonna be super dark. Um, so just kind of be aware that like your intenseness of it, like this might be, right here, about as dark as we're gonna get, all right? And that's okay, like, I think that's fine. Again, um, you can look at, like, my plate over here. You can see, like, kind of how it darkened up um, as it, it dried. And so maybe we get some richer, darker tone. Um, but my, my expectation is pretty low. Like, I'm not expecting it to get too much darker than that, okay? All right, so anyways, Pretty basic um, idea here, all right, as far as like the process of it. Go slow, build things up, use your little palette, use small amounts of water, don't like overdo it. Check your brush um, as you go. And yeah, should be kind of a good little experiment. I'm going to um, go back to my four main forms uh, that I talked about in the crayon video that I just did. And in that video, like I talked about how you've got the, the, the sphere and you've got the cube and you've got the cone and you've got the cylinder. And those four shapes kind of can be used to create any form that you'd additionally make, whether it be, you know, like I'm gonna make this jar or I'm gonna make a, hem a human face or I'm gonna make a body or, you know, something or whatever. You can take those forms and kind of use them to create that. But I'm gonna use um, this 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 cube and I'm gonna paint it today um, and create um, a, a a rendering of it I guess with coffee okay I'm gonna carefully draw out my the shape of my cube here and it's kind of like this sort of shape on top and then bringing this down and we got sides slanted like that all right and like that, okay? Now, as I was saying before, like I want to add tone in, so I'm grabbing like, I'm gonna put this stuff in view a little bit more maybe, okay? Um, I wanna add tone uh, to where it's like light first. So I'm gonna do some light kind of shading here. I'm gonna get some of that water on my brush. I'm using my cardboard, it's a little bit easier. Um, you can do this on the paper, but you just have to be really careful. And I can actually like look at that work up like along that line there. I can blend that stuff in. Um, I want that to be just a little bit darker, like out on this edge. I blend that. I'm gonna get some water on here, and I'm gonna pull that tone that I already have on the top. I'm gonna pull that over, keeping it a little bit light on the corner. Just kind of working it around. Okay. Um, my most intense part, and so like I'm going to start out again, like I'm not going to go full dark, um, but I'm going to start out here uh, with a little bit of light or darker tone. And like the happy medium, like if our brush is a little bit wet, it's going to spread more evenly. We're not going to get that streakiness. 
like in it, which is kind of ideal. I'm gonna spread that around, like little bits of water. Kind of work that up. I can work up, just like a watercolor, I can work the coffee up. That corner is a little bit light, like down there. It's dark up here. So I'm gonna use that coffee. I'm gonna get some of the more intense stuff here. And load this up. Ooh, that's good. Okay, so I'm making that a little bit darker. I'm gonna keep filling in this part here. I want this to be dark. I'm gonna blend it out. I'm gonna grab some water here. Again, using the cardboard, like this is holding the water really well. It's not getting, like it's not kind of falling apart on me, which is good. Okay. All right. Kind of like tightening that up just a little bit. Okay. Now this side is my lightest side. I'm actually going to rinse out my brush. All right. I'm going to take just this edge right here and I'm going to kind of try to just loosen that up just a little tiny bit. In the picture, it's almost, it's like definitely white like towards the top. So I'm just going to take just like a clean brush almost, working up the edge, kind of pushing that tone up there. I'm going to wipe off my brush, get a little bit more water in it, kind of spread this around. Okay, so now I've got like this pretty nice white kind of set up up here. If I was like premeditating this, I might not have drawn in this line here and just had it be like the contrast. Like I could maybe try to pull out some of this. It's the beauty of watercolor. If you kind of work it up a little bit, and it works the same way with this coffee. Like if I'm just working that up just a little bit, see how that softens that line? It's kind of nice. It's like a better situation going on there. Okay. Um, I'm gonna come back, grab some more of my coffee. For this dark spot, yeah, like this is just popping out really well. Okay, I got this nice bold kind of edge here. Bring that down, blend this in. I'm really happy actually with how this like looks and how this is working out. Like, it's pretty cool actually. Kind of blend that part out right there. Tighten up this corner, bring that back in. Maybe soften up that line too a little bit. Okay, soften up this line on the top. There we go. So, I mean, I could like go back in, kind of add just a little bit more to like the darker spots just to try to get them to just stand out that little bit extra. Um, but for the most part, I think that looks pretty good. So yeah, that's cool. Okay, so you guys today, painting with coffee. Um, who would have thought that was something? But uh, this was actually really fun and the color of this is just super cool like I'm really liking that brown um, I think doing a project with like just this sepia kind of color I think would be really neat so we'll kind of push into that you guys as you're looking at your projects and trying to find ways to shade and color this might be a really good way to do that so just kind of keep that in mind you guys um, there's stuff all around your house that you can use for coloring that you probably wouldn't think of and like I said for doing this you could use tea um, again just like using small amounts of water and really like making it bold um, the coffee is definitely a richer color. I think that'll probably work out the best. I'm honestly gonna like leave this little thing just sitting around and just let the water keep evaporating and just let it get bolder and bolder in color. Um, you could also do this though with other stuff and I'm gonna keep kind of digging through my fridge and looking around the house and try to find other colors and stuff to do uh, this with. But yeah, anyways, uh, hopefully you guys are, are finding this interesting and you guys are experimenting and playing and failing and doing all sorts of fun with this. So uh, yeah, good luck with it. And I will talk to you later.